The Bible says that a lie is more attractive than the truth. And that's what's happening. It's a lot more fun to jump on the bandwagon of destroying somebody's life over a lie rather than what actually happened. 2018 changed and ruined my life, and there is no chill K-Wing anymore. I'm not the same person I was during the Arkham days. I've had a lot of horrible things happen to me. I deal with things that none of you can possibly imagine. This is going to be very difficult to do a video on, but it needs to be said. The other day, I was on my um, Let's Play channel doing a stream of Fortnite, and I had a person harassing me that I wasn't paying attention to. In fact, I wasn't even looking at the chat. Amber had to do something and was having problems with her system, so I was looking at the chat for advice. This one guy was saying terrible things, saying that I said things on Discord with a racial slur, and um, they were spreading the truth and exposing me. And I knew the person was lying because I don't have a Discord. I have a private um, screen name with my... Well, it's not really my real name, but it's based on an anime character that I really like that no one will ever figure out. And an anime avatar of a show that you have no idea because I've seen thousands of animes. You wouldn't even think to use this character, so it's not me. Um, and I unfortunately have to use that for speaking to game developers, speaking to my boss in the Philippines, and uh, other things. So them using an icon from my original Discord and making a fake Discord impersonating me and saying terrible things, cool, but that's not me. Uh, one thing, I've never used racial slurs in my life. I don't see color. I've said that very adamantly. I grew up in a very diverse neighborhood of New York. I don't want to get into the specifics of it, but pretty much every nationality you can think of lived on my street. We all got together, we hung out, we were friends. I would have loved to go to school with those like massive group of friends because I probably wouldn't have been bullied. Probably would have had a great time in school, but my dad got a job in Michigan. I was uprooted. I didn't even get to go to, like, first grade or kindergarten with these guys. Lost touch. Some of them are still there. Some of them are not. Some of them grew up to do some really cool things. To honor his father, my friend John, or my next-door neighbor, um, he became a firefighter in New York City. He lost his dad in one of the towers. My other friend Christian, his dad was a brain surgeon, his son grew up to be a doctor. You know, they're all great kids. I tried to reach out to them on Facebook. But you know how that goes. I mean, when you move away, you're kind of the... You're not really a part of that group anymore. But um, if I ever used a racial slur, my uh, Portuguese grandma would have probably knocked me upside my head. Because there are people in my family who are of color. They've married into my Portuguese family. I've never said anything about them. I don't see color, I see people. Martin Luther King says, we don't judge people based on the color of their skin, but the strength of their character. I can tell you that my group of haters have no character, so I do judge them. I do make assumptions based on what they've done, what they've allowed. It doesn't matter what nationality it is. It doesn't matter who or what they identify as. I see these people as scum. Not because of their sexual orientation. Because they're scummy humans. That's why. Same thing with the DC comic pros that I've yelled at over the years. I judge them based on their actions, not what they look like. Heck, I didn't even know half of these people that I called out on Twitter were POCs. I didn't even pay attention to that paid attention to some of the crap they were talking about, and I called them out. That's all it was. I said some politically charged things over the years because, well, everyone has an opinion. That's the internet. In hindsight, yeah, 
maybe shouldn't have said some of the things I did, but I did say them. I am not far right. I am an independent. I don't know how many times I have to beat people over the head until they get this. The last president I voted for was Bush. Um, I don't even have my license renewed, so I can't even vote. Drives Amber crazy because I can't walk, but I have neuropathy in my legs anyway, so I can't really drive anyway, so what's the point of having a license? I'm losing my ability to walk. What am I going to need to drive for? So yeah, most of the stuff people say about me is all lies. But the problem is, I don't defend myself because... I come from a time on YouTube where it's rarely bad to acknowledge your haters. Because it's like you're giving them the attention that they want. I was talking to a couple YouTuber friends and they said, you need to come out on top of this and talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Because this is very painful for the things that they've done to me. They've done targeted harassment campaign against me for three years. And the fact that I got a little heated a few nights ago is very tame compared to what I really want to have happen to these people. It was possible that they could all just disappear in a fire or like some type of, I don't know, random act of God. That'd be great. I'd feel happy because you need to have context about why I hate these people. Some of them have openly talked about raping and killing my wife, for one. Some of them have spread misinformation about the death of my son. That's two. Some of them have gone out of their way to convince people on our Patreon to stop supporting us financially. By the way, that's probable cause of defamation right there. Actually interfering with uh, somebody's uh, livelihood. Not just like, oh, boycott this product. No, they actually went out of their way to contact our patrons. And they broke the law. The death threats against me and my wife, that crosses the line as well. That's not just... Oh, my free speech. Shut it. You crossed the line. And those of you on Twitter that are a part of this little hate group, I hold you personally responsible and liable for this because you allowed these people to conjugate under your hate banner. You basically gave them a place to feel like they belong in the I Hate Kaywin Club, and they say some pretty damaging things, and you are an accomplice. I know people are going to take sound bites and put this out of context, but this is the original video, so this is what it is. So let's talk about how this hate group was born, I guess. Now, I can't remember the exact dates and times because this is very painful to try to relive. It's basically like retelling my car accident and seeing it in vivid detail, but not remembering exactly how it happened, but just you know, when the car hit and when my ribs smashed up against the side of the car and my head um, collided with the driver's side. I got some brain damage. It's that kind of thing. So we had a Twitter and a, um, a Discord that was open to the public. It was a bad idea. I used to hang out with people and talk to them. Thought they were my friends. Spent way too much time. My manager at the time told me it was wrong to do that because these people are going to take advantage of you. And if they don't have you to talk to because you're their hero, you know, something bad could happen someday. And I'm like, well, you know, th these are good kids. It's not like this. I got some time. I'm going to talk about it. But when I didn't have time, they started to act really weird. They would discord me and they'd be like, Wait, when are we going to get to hang out again and chat? And it's like, I don't have time. I'm working on this series, I'm writing this Batman lore, I'm doing this, Amber and I are in the process of moving, all this other stuff, you know. I just kept pestering and pestering and pestering, and I was just like, I don't want to go on the Discord anymore, so I stopped going on the Discord. Um, I told people that I was being bothered on the Discord, and I just it wasn't something that I really wanted to focus my energies on. I wanted to try to get a Switch partnership, because Hitbox had just like basically ended, so I was like, okay, I'm going to do the Hitbox, or the Twitch thing. And I did Twitch for a while. And then people were like, I really miss talking with you. And it's like, I'm sorry, but I don't have time to do that anymore. I did have time, but I don't. <sighs> so, it kept festering, I guess. And uh, one night, when Amber and I had to leave our home, 
and go away for a few days to attend my grandfather's funeral. They started doing some really weird stuff on, on Discord. And I heard about it from a friend of mine, like, hey, there's all this stuff going on on Discord where somebody's impersonating me. This is my friend Travis. And he says, I did not do this stuff, Luke. And I was like, I got it, man. I understand. I totally understand. And um, I'm like, we'll take care of it when we get home because I don't really have access to the Discord. And I didn't. My Discord was on my computer here. I didn't have access to it. There's nothing I could do. Called some of, um, or rather, I reached out on Twitter on some of the people that were mods on the Discord and see if they could deal with what was going on until I got home. And apparently there was this huge fight. I still don't know the details. Some people left the community. And then some nasty rumors started. And then people started distributing porn to minors on our forums and got us in trouble. And the images that they were sending were pictures of my wife, saying they hacked my phone, and they were talking about all the type of stuff I look at, you know, in my private life saying how Amber and I aren't really married, and they were doing all kinds of weird stuff. Um, I am not going to confirm whether or not those pictures of my wife are real. It's none of your business. My private life is my private life. I find my wife very attractive. We're very active for people our age. And we've always wanted to have kids. And we always said God's timing is when we would have kids. Um, I told Amber not to go on the Discord. And she was like, why? The Discord's, you know, our, our Discord's really great. She saw some images, but not of her, and was furious that people were distributing really bad images to little kids. And then they also made an account, or had an account, where they were impersonating me, saying racial slurs, saying how I was cheating on my wife, and all kinds of stuff. And people believed it because the way that they were speaking, they copied my mannerisms. Um, they also said that they were going to do exposed videos, which were very popular back then, to try to get our YouTube channel taken away because these were Christians and they did not appreciate us leading children astray, and we were um, Satan's... I forget what they said. We are basically um, something really twisted and weird. They had an obligation to tell the truth because it's something God would want them to do. Um, Amber got super stressed, and I was having a nervous breakdown called Travis on the phone and I did something really stupid now I've never told anybody this I accused him of being the ringleader of the hate group it was a low point in my life and Travis was and is my best friend I said something that made our friendship dissolve, which was pretty bad at the time. My uh, my friend is not super religious, but he's aware of religious things, and he knows what I meant when I said what I did. I thought our YouTube career was over that day. There was all kinds of crazy stuff happening on the Discord. We were losing a lot of followers like we were pro-Jared or something when he cheated on his wife. And um, our whole world was crashing down. I was in an, I was having a nervous breakdown. I was having a panic attack. And I said, are you my Judas? Why did you betray me? And Travis got very silent. And... He just sounded very broken and was just like, how can you accuse me of something like this? Now, the reason why I did that is because Travis is a hacker. He's able to dox people. He's able to do all kinds of stuff. He's a brilliant tech guy. I didn't realize that there were other people on the Discord like that. 
that could hack phones and um, do that kind of stuff that were in our, you know, our fan base. And apparently I had a hater from that Discord call that was building a case against us, going over my Twitter because I never erased my tweets, grabbing a lot of my political takes over the years. Uh, even though I'm a registered independent, I've said some things that, you know, definitely trigger lefties and SJWs. Um, I probably should have worded it a different way, but... No one really followed my Twitter anyway back then. They still don't. So I see myself as a ghost. So I just see Twitter as a place where I go to vent. Rather than talking about it in my videos, I talk about it on my social media sometimes. Uh, so they basically collected, you know, years and years of tweets. And were building up uh, something I didn't know about till years later. It took them a long time to post it, but they made a Reddit. Um, but anyway, um, Travis calmed me down. And Travis and some other people took down the Discord. Amber uh, was still reeling from stuff because people started to contact her DMs on Twitter. And tell her things and show her things. And then people the next day thought it was their duty to expose us on Twitter. And expose us on YouTube because we were harming children. And um, Amber got very, very sick. And uh, she got kind of, she was sweating a lot, um, but she just was like weeping. And she was like, why are these people saying this horrible things about us? We've never even done this. She says, I've never done this. I'm not this type of person. I've never did this to you. And, you know, she was, I was worried that she was going to have problems. So I tried to calm her down as best as possible. We went to the doctor. And they, um... They, they checked her blood pressure. It was 198 over, I think it was like 80 or something like that. It's pretty high. And uh, they did some blood work. And they um, came to the conclusion that, um, well, the reason why Amber's having a lot of problems is because she's with child. It's like, what are you talking about? I was naive, and I'm just thinking, you know what? Amber just maybe had a lot of food or something because it was Thanksgiving and Christmas and her birthday. Um, I don't really know how female anatomy works because we were never using protection or anything like from the night of our wedding ever. So we just figured that, you know, we would have to go to the hospital or something or do doctor things in order to have kids which we didn't have insurance and no way of doing that so we were both kind of shocked like what are you talking about and Amber was like well I felt funny you know ever since we got back from New York and I'm like okay so yeah they were like well we strongly advise that you you know get her to the uh, hospital and you know check and see what's going on with your baby and it's like, you know, wow, I'm um, going to have a baby. And um, I went home and I researched where there was a baby doctor. Called them and scheduled uh, an appointment to get an ultrasound. And then I, you know, contacted my family and told them, hey, we're, you're going to be grandparents. Amber got really mad at me and said, how could you tell them that? And, um, you know... We went to the doctor, had the ultrasound, we're very excited. Uh, I was on my phone and I went to Amazon and I ordered a crib for like 250 or $300. I was very excited. My kid was going to have the best crib ever. And um, they did the ultrasound and the nurse was like, well, your baby's a boy and it looks like she's four to six months along. But I need to go get the doctor. So I'm going to leave you guys in here. Just relax. And, you know, um, I'll get you screenshots of your baby. And um, the doctor came in. He was very solemn. Uh, 
put the jelly stuff on her tummy and started, you know, using the, uh, whatever that thing is called, the wand thing, and, um, smiled at us and said, uh, um, why don't you, why don't you guys go home for the night? And, um, we'll give you a call. Um, how far away do you live? And I was like, well, you know, I live about this far away. He's like, okay. He says, we'll call you around this time. I'm like, okay. He says, make sure she rests. I said, okay. So, um, Amber and I were going to watch something. I don't remember what it is. I can't tell you. Doctor calls. Says, uh, are you sitting down, son? I was like, yeah, I'm sitting down. I sit down for a living. He's like, okay. Um, now, just so you know, your son doesn't have a heartbeat. It's like, well, I mean, he's just, he's got tubes and stuff in him, right? I mean, Amber's supposed to do stuff to keep the baby connected to stuff, right? And he's like, yeah, in, in a sense, but he says, you don't understand what I'm saying. He says, your son isn't alive. I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, I have the picture. It's, it's right there. The baby's right there. He says, I'm sorry, but there's nothing we can do. And, um, said I would talk to Amber later. And he said, um, yeah, he says she should rest. I said, yep. He says, I know this is very hard for you. I said, I mean, in one day I, uh, found out that, um, I was going to be a dad. And then, uh, near the end of the night, I find out that I'm not. And he says, well, um, a couple months or a year, you know, you guys can try again. You'll be probably more successful. I said, I don't want to hear that. And he says, okay, well, when she starts to, um, feel like the baby's coming out and I'm like I'm sorry what he says yeah he says she still has to go through um the baby coming out I'm I'm like she, she has to give birth to the, the stillborn and he's like yes Sorry, this is, um, my wife and I got married young to have a big family. I was, uh, 35 when we got pregnant, I think. I just told everybody on Twitter that I was going to be a dad. All my followers. All my friends. My grandma was um, going through a lot after my grandpa died. She was very excited about the prospect of my wife having a baby. It, uh, I, I couldn't tell my parents over the phone in, uh, I was, um, shaking a lot after the phone call. Amber, uh, heard the doctor upstairs she has very good hearing she was wailing 
sobbing. I was shaking. Almost had a panic attack. I don't deal well with stress. I uh, texted my parents. Didn't even tell them. Like, I couldn't tell them with my voice. My voice was shaky. I remember sitting on this couch all night listening to Amber cry until she fell asleep. We went through some pretty intense things with our marriage. It was very strained. Amber was really hurt. And um, she started to have scary thoughts. I thought these thoughts were very real. And we prayed and cried together. We decided it was best that she leave the channel. And um, I was going to... I was going to do things. I was going to take over. I was going to do everything. And um, we came up with a plan to have her go back to school. She wanted to learn how to cook, which I thought was pretty brave and very strong of her, considering the heart stuff and losing the baby. But it, um, Discord situation made it very bad for my wife's health. And, um, if we didn't have the Discord and we didn't have those haters, my son would be four years old now. Maybe five. I'm not good with math. Be sitting here right here. Hopefully not wearing a Superman shirt. Asking me all kinds of weird questions. Probably petting the cat wrong. Don't think I wouldn't trade my son's life for theirs. If by some freaky miracle it brought my kid back to life. I wouldn't hesitate. Anyway. My wife um, pulled herself up, got out of that dark place, bounced back. I had to take out loans, and we had to uh, do what we could to, you know, get her into the, that school. But she had a lot of fun. Um, I was doing my best to um, juggle the business and try to deal with my feelings about losing our kid. And uh, my, my response to everything was to work harder. I don't know if you remember back then, but I was burning the candle at both ends. I was streaming on Twitch, streaming on YouTube, I was making YouTube videos, I was doing news videos, I was doing all kinds of stuff. Anything to keep myself busy. Stop visiting family, stop talking to friends, Completely isolated. And then... Our hate circle came back. And they'd grown to several hundred people. Interestingly enough, the haters that were part of this little Twitter group... Um, they were... Uh, how do I put this? They were all ex-fans. Every single one of them. The same sob story. Oh, he fell off hard. He, you know, he believes this. He believes I don't need to exist and blah, 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 blah. All this bull crap. Um, and they're all stupid for thinking this stuff. I even said at the beginning of the video, I don't hate anybody. I hate my haters. But I don't hate them because if they identify as a what's it. I don't care. Doesn't impact my life. You know, what I think about them shouldn't impact theirs. Not a lawmaker, I can't do anything. Not a political advocate, I don't have, I'm not an activist. I'm not going to campaign for anything. You live your life, you let me live mine. 
So, uh, yeah, they believe a bunch of crazy stuff. And then they started their second Reddit. Had the first one closed down. Got the second one shut down. And the third one they wouldn't shut down because they were tired of hearing from me and my lawyer. So uh, the third one stayed up. Became a place that was their national anthem of crazy. And uh, when people didn't leave me in drones the way that people, you know, left G4 a while ago, uh, they uh, came up with a new fun to do. The miscarriage rumor that Amber and I, like, used it for financial gain was created probably around 2020, right during the pandemic from a false, fake Discord handle that I don't even use. Yeah, and I've already told you guys that my Discord handle is an anime character that you would never assume me using, and I only use that for talking to developers. I don't even have my real name attached to it. I get some laughs from developers when they see my icon, but I hate being on Discord because Discord brings back memories. I wish that more people would go to Skype or use Google because I hate Discord. I hate it. If I could nuke Twitter and Discord, I would. If it could just suddenly disappear, that'd be great. Be good healing for me because I, I believe that those places are very bad. They do more harm than they do good. I've seen it. Don't say I haven't seen it because I've seen it. So anyway, they started that fun rumor that... Um, the K-Wings faked a, a miscarriage. And out of all the crazy stuff that people have said, like, not everybody believes the racial thing or that I'm a bigot or whatever. They're too smart for that. Because it's not true. But some people started to believe the miscarriage thing. And more people got attached to that lie. And it just kind of snowballed and continued to escalate. And even now, they still use that as a way of, like, recruiting people in their hate groups. And that's all their Twitters are. They just consist of people that hate me. I know each and every one of those people that are in there. I remember seeing them. I remember interacting with them on Twitter. You know? Um, and now they all want me dead in a ditch. They want me off YouTube. They don't want me to make money. And I want the same for them. If I could contact their place of work, I would get them fired in a heartbeat. That's what they're trying to do to me. Why wouldn't I do the same thing to them? They get me taken off YouTube. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to track down each and every one of them that's connected to that and make their lives miserable. Because I'm going to have a lot of free time. But anyway. So they had a bunch of people that have, like, you know, all rallied behind this hate flag. Just on assumptions and rumors and speculation. What's funny is you read a lot of their tweets and even they're like, oh, it's like, well, I heard this, but I've never actually seen it. Yeah, doofus, because it doesn't exist. Morons. Yeah, I've made fun of fictional characters, and I don't like certain fictional characters. Deal with it. Everyone on the internet has an opinion. Learn to get along with people or don't. Because not everyone's going to share the same opinion that you have. Not everyone's going to say the same things that you want them to say. I never will. So don't harass me, expecting me to. I don't care about your cause. I don't care how you want to live your life. Don't bother me, I won't bother you. That's how I work. It's that simple. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this was a great idea or not. Reliving some of this stuff, I don't even know how I'm going to sleep tonight, to be honest. Thinking about how it's been almost four years, and my cousin has had four kids since then. <sighs> the one thing that I want to happen is I want idiots to stop believing that rumor because it's evil. It is dishonorable to my son, my wife, me, pure, unbridled evil. People that spread that rumor are not human. I will never acknowledge your existence as human. You are the devil incarnate. 
or you're possessed. Probably both. Don't care. I don't know how to ignore this, guys. I don't know who my friends are. I don't know who my followers are. I don't know who's real. I don't know who's not. The Bible says that a lie is more attractive than the truth. And that's what's happening. It's a lot more fun to jump on the bandwagon of destroying somebody's life over a lie rather than what actually happened. 2018 changed and ruined my life, and there is no chill K-Wing anymore. I'm not the same person I was during the Arkham days. I've had a lot of horrible things happen to me. I deal with things that none of you can possibly imagine. If you're a believer, I could use your prayers. I don't know what I believe anymore. I don't know why God is putting me through this hell. I don't know why he allowed some people to kill my son. I don't know why he gave my wife heart problems. I know Christians like to use the excuse it's a fallen world with evil in it. It's not good enough for me. Losing the uh, use of my legs because of some stupid nerve disease. I'm supposed to just smile and entertain people. Act like everything's fine. 